now we're going to hear from Rakesh Rajani. He's the founder of, how do you say this? Taweza? Traweza. Traweza. It's great. And what's it mean? It means... We can make it happen in Swahili. We can make it happen. I like that. Okay. So he's all about citizen engagement in East Africa, yes? So tell us a little bit about how mobile is important to you. Okay. Though I'm tempted to just engage Herman in terms of how we can work in East Africa more. But okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell my <laughs> story. But I'll follow up. I think the textbooks uh, on the mobile phone is going to be key. I think the opinion polling is all here. So there's lots yeah, of stuff cool. that I think we should talk. Okay. Here's a problem that many policymakers, big muckety mucks, uh, decision makers in capital cities in Kampala and Nairobi and Dar es Salaam where I work have which is that they make big decisions that affect millions of people and spend billions of dollars, but they really don't know uh, what, what the impact is, how people are benefiting or not, are policies practiced, uh, and they're really in the dark. And they don't know because there's a lot of information, systematic information missing, there lots of anecdotes, but you don't really know whether the anecdote is representative or not. And the official kind of administrative data that comes through is, is lousy, it's unreliable. So about the only thing that exists that is reliable are these large surveys, like the household budget survey or the demographic and health survey. But those surveys have two problems. One is they don't tell good stories. Uh, you get some important numbers, but not great stories. And also they're very expensive. A typical national survey costs $2 million and takes about 18 months to do. So it's not very nimble. If something happens and you want to know it today, you, you have to raise $2 million and spend 18 months before you know the answer. Um, so what? Africa or East Africa? East Africa, I think. But it's, I think the, these things are cost about the same wherever you are. But the context I'm speaking about is East Africa. So what do you do? Well, let's think about the mobile phone. Uh, could you do a mobile phone-based survey? Now, of course, lots of feedback is coming through mobile phones. There's lots of citizen monitoring activities. There's citizen journalism. Uh, there's Ushahidi platforms, Facebook, etc. All of that is great, except if you want kind of systematic, rigorous information that will stand up to the you know, policy wonks and those who are skeptical, what do you do? So we have designed, and it's in better phase now, something called the Wanainchi survey. Wanainchi is Swahili for citizens. What we're going to do is use, first, to a very proper scientific sampling, uh, and we're looking at between 1,200 and 2,500 people per country of each one of the three East African countries we work in. Uh, and, you know, we'll do that properly so we have all the demographic data and you can run your regressions for those of you who are kind of stats inclined. But then the idea is that once we have these, uh, this information, and for those who don't have mobile phones, of which there are fewer and fewer, we would supply them with phones or kind of semi-smartphones so that you can have interactive work. Then once a week you could send them a set of questions. Not too many, probably ten questions. And you could ask all kinds of things. You could focus on, is the money reaching the schools? You could focus on other kids learning. You could say whether particular medicines are meant to be free. Are they actually free? Um, you could, you know, so you could monitor a lot of what's going on. You could also do opinion polls. The president just made a speech and announced something. What do you think about it? What could be done about it? Are you happy or are you not happy? And the, 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 what is amazing about this, and we can see this already in the pilot phase, that you can think up the concept today and six days later, you can actually release the nationally representative data. Uh, the power of that is really, really very, very, very good. And once you've set this up, there's all kinds of other things. You kind of can build in apps, so to speak, that others can come in. You don't need to do it. So there are ethnogra ethnographers who want to follow up and study in great detail. And in 20 communities, they could do that. You could have these people also do their own citizen journalism and link to somebody else. And so what's also beautiful about these open architectures at the core of this is this survey, but around it you can build lots of apps. Um, and the lastly, I think uh, what we're really keen to do is to try to now think how can we use this data back and visualize it? Uh, how can we make it much more accessible? Images, uh, mash it with other things. And so if any of you out there are, are good at that, um, you know, can, can, can know how you take this data set and make it much more appealing to ordinary citizens and get it out there through different media, I'd be very keen to speak with you. Thank you.